Lord's been good to us today, all down through our life. He really has. And song Jamie Lee is singing, I remember. Jamie Lee, you've known that song for about 10 years. Your man, you're getting old. <laughs> you've known it for about 10 years. You can say, I've known the song for about 10 years. I remember when you were singing it, when you go home, when you was going home from church. I remember you singing that song in the back seat. I know then that you're going to be able to remember. She wanted to remember something. Ma'am, doctor said you wasn't going to remember nothing. You know, because of things, but uh, God said different, didn't he? God Amen. 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 Now she remembers everything. Amen. 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 She does. She remembers everything. She's, she's a walking testimony. We thank God for her in her life. We really do. Look at her when you're feeling down or whatever, and you can look at her and be lifted up. That's what uh, it should be in our lives. So we can. Uh, she's been a blessing to us. Thank God for delivering her and helping her. Amen. I love it. We're going to read out of Hebrews chapter 12. Preach a little bit. Amen. Thankful for God and what He's doing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Glad he saved me. Glad he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. I don't know what I'd do without God. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to do without God. Amen. He's eternal. Man, he's forevermore. We don't have to do without God. Amen. The whole world don't have to do without God. He's still God whether they're serving him or not. He's, right. He's still going to do what needs to be done whether they're serving him or not. If we choose to turn back today, he's still God and he's still going to do what needs to be done. Amen. Amen. Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Wherefore seeing we also a great cloud of witness, are compassed by, about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do we so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray. Dear most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you. We want to thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to be in this place. We love you today. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that come out tonight. We ask, Lord, that you bless us, Lord, with our ears. Lord, that we can hear, Lord, what the Spirit's trying to say to the church this evening. We love you, Jesus. And thank you, God, for the very word, Lord, that you put on our hearts this evening. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we thank you, God, for all those, Lord, that should have been here, Lord, tonight. We pray, Lord God, Lord, that you touch them and that their covers are short, Lord, that they see that they need to be in the house of God at the appointed time. Lord, if they can make it. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you, Lord, for everything you've done you're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ and that, Lord. And amen. 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 You know, we, we tell people all the time, and we, we try to encourage people to come to church. Yeah. You know, we do because we know it's the best thing for them, Lord, to have mercy. I mean, you, people see people so sick, and you need to go to the doctor. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the first thing. You need to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. But, man, when things is all well and you're getting around good and the pockets is full, and boy, that day we, we lose we lose the thing for God. We really do. Yeah. And he's the one provided all things for us. Yeah. That's right. He really does. I still give him all praise. Yeah, Amen. I get up and go to work every day. I do, but I know he gives me the strength. Amen. When he opened my eyes this morning to give me a breath, he, I, that was... Given from God. Amen. Everything I've done down through the day. I've got to walk a lot today. I really have. I've got to move my body a lot today. Got to do things that a lot of people can't do. I'm so blessed by the Lord. But I'm going to speak a little bit this evening about a cloud of witness. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit. I, I, love, I love the Lord and how he speaks to you on things. And the things with the church, we have such a great cloud of witness that I don't know about you, but I've got one that I can't deny this. I can't deny God. I can't deny that he's real. He's, he's so true. And I want to read out of Genesis chapter 1 here a little bit. At the beginning of this witness, we, 
We live in a time today where they they take and they say this molecule or that molecule or something to happen in space and come together and brought this and boom here and then this and that and, and we came, but it's much simpler when we do this. It says in the beginning God. Yes. Ain't that much simpler? Yes. That's just broke down so simple. In the yes. beginning God. Huh? Yes. Why can't well, <laughs> that is so elementary right there. It is. It don't take a big, deep, big, wide book or nothing to figure this out. He, he just said, in the beginning, God. And it's then it said, God created the heaven and earth. So how did the heavens and the earth, how did they exist? Because God said. God created them. It's that, that simple. That's right. Cut and dry, it's over with. This says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And you... You think about the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters and, and how we were so void and dark when we come, when we was out in this dark and dying world. And I think about how the Spirit of God come upon this. But I mean the darkness that I had in my life and, and there's so much light. And he moved upon me and he brought light into my life. That's what he done. It says, he moved and said, God said, let there be light and there was light. He spoke it to me and he said, that, and he gave me light. He gave me yeah. understanding. He gave me knowledge of it. He gave me, and I'm speaking of that as I know this is creation. I'm just using it and, and just taking it back and forth. But yeah. this is creation where God created what is going to be ended one day. You know this is going to be ended? Yes. What he created, all this stuff I'm talking about here is going to come to an end one day. And, and But I'm just taking and using it, but this light come into my life. And that light is going to be forevermore. It is. Yeah. This light, the sun one day, I believe the Bible teaches it's going to be turned into blood. It ain't going to shine no more, Sister Pam. It's going to be total darkness upon the face of this earth. And, and there was at one time, there was... When Jesus gave it and he said it is finished, I believe darkness covered the whole earth. I believe it did. At that time, when the rocks had begun to shake and that veil in the temple was rent from the top and the bottom. And what that did, that brought separation from God and man. And that brought us into a place to where we can come to God ourselves today. Don't need the Pope. Right. Praise be to God. We don't need. To. You know where the Pope's at right now? Hell, glory. You know where he's at right now? For my message or what I've been reading, there's some church news that goes on that you can watch. And he is at Mount Sinai right now establishing ten new commandments is what the yeah. Pope's doing right now. And if you believe that garbage or not, it, it is. He's right there. Yep. But right now, I believe there's going to be there from the 7th to the 18th of November, whatever, establishing 10 new commandments. I guess they think we need some renewal is what they think we need. But it don't do away with the old, God did not come to the Pope. God did not come. He didn't sit down with no rocks and him ride on them. It was the finger of God that rode on. And Jesus, I tell you, when Moses was up there, it was the finger of God wrote these things and wrote it down for us. And that is in stone today. That will never go away. But he is. He's over there trying to make some new commandments and doing some things all about this old green stuff that's going on and all that. But it's a bunch of foolishness and garbage. I can't help but chuckle at it because how ignorant that we get. I'm telling you. And, it's, and people don't understand what the power that the Roman Catholic Church has over the whole world and the things that's coming up on this world. How he said to separate, we need to separate ourselves. He said come out of her my people and I believe that's who we need to come out of. I still believe that the Bible says there's a great whore and that is the great whore. I believe the harlot and they got many little harlots out there. I believe that's these little the groupies and denominations and all these things that have all, I'm telling you, they got their, they got their ways inside of them. They do. they got all their ways. They're taking on the things they do. How many of them is going to grab these new Ten Commandments? How many of them? Can you watch and see what's going on. It is. And we got this trend going on about the, the marijuana and stuff being legalized. And now it's no different than a pill. So it's all right for a Christian to smoke pot. No, it ain't. Amen. Come on. You can't do that. It's still sin. It's still not that way. And still, if you're taking your prescription drugs and it's all in your mind in the way that it shouldn't, praise be to God, you need to break away from those things. You you need to calm down just a little bit and quit getting so high off of them. Come it's on. the truth today. We need to understand. We're God's people today. Right. We ain't supposed to walk around all slant eyed and crooked face and up on some drug all the time. We're supposed to stand for God. We're supposed to be sober minded. Amen. Amen. Sober minded Amen. today. I've got too much of a cloud of witness to go along with the foolishness of this world. Right. Don't you? I've got it. He's already spoken and said, Let there be light. He said, God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So what's he doing in our life? He divided the light from my darkness. He showed me, praise be to God, that darkness can't have no part of me no more. I have come and he's come in me and he is full light. That's a, the light of men, praise be to God.
God. Let me go to John here. Thank you, Jesus. You go to John. He goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. It's John chapter 1, the big John, they call him. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of what? The light. A man and that all men through him might believe. It says, and he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. It says, and then that was the true light, which lighteth every man. So what did he do? He lit me up. Amen. Amen. He, Jesus come in my life. He lit me up is what he done. I was just a vessel, praise be to God, that didn't have no oil. I was a vessel that the wick was not being used. And he come, he filled me up, and then he lit me up, Sister Pam. Amen. He was what that tucked me over is what he done. Amen. It says he was a light that every man that cometh into the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. They don't want to know him today. They really don't want to know him. But I'm telling you who Jesus is. He's a good God and He's among us. And it tells us around there, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the, of the, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He had been begotten of God. He was begat, and He was the only one of God. And I'm telling you, now there's many sons and daughters of God. Let me mark it in case he has me go back to it. And it's telling us here, it said, He divided the light from the darkness. So what's the Spirit going to do? It's going to divide things in your life. It's going to shine upon the darkness in your life and it's going to show you what you need to get out of your life. I don't know about you, but He's still working on me. Amen. I've got a cloud of witness in my life. How many's got a cloud of witness in your life? And I've got a cloud of witness in my life tonight. Amen. I'm telling you. And then it says, and He called the light day and the darkness He called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. They're sinners and they're saints, church. Come on. Two things. They're sinners and they're saints. You ain't no word that I find in the Bible that you find in the middle. If there is nothing in the middle, praise be God. You know what? It was in the middle. You know what he called them? An old generation of vipers. He called them hypocrites right to their face, those that was in the middle. That's what they done. Here come the here come the Pharisees out there. And they had everything all right on the outside, but the inside of them, the Bible says that they, they was like white and sepulchers full of dead men's bones. And they had all this going on for them, but they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know him when he came. And they took him. What did they do? They knew him not. When this light come into the world, they knew him not. Why? They didn't know God. They didn't know God. You're going to know God. He's a good God. I love you, Jesus. It says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So how did it all happen? How did the seas part? How did the heavens? How did the, how did blue skies get apart? How did them clouds? And all? How did all this happen? God created it. God said it. He said it, and it spoke it, and it was done. If we can't believe it, that's a cloud of witness, church, right there to us. I'm telling you, we can take take this right here, and we can go home. It says, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening, the morning, and and the evening and the morning were the second day. So how was days made? God made the days. How did He separate? Right from the night when it came to the evening and to the morning. It's, a, it's simple. How can we take it and know, praise be to God, all these things? Because the Word of God teaches us this stuff. Right. The Word of God teaches us. Amen. We've got such a cloud of witness knowing that we can keep and hold to this man called Jesus and who he was. But we can take and look at everything that's been a cloud of witness in our life that's going to take care of us. You can take and you can look at Elijah and the things that went on with him. What a cloud of witness it was for him to be set by the brook. A man in like passions as we are prayed in three years it didn't rain. That God set him by the brook and the brook took him and gave him water and the ravens came and gave him meat and then praise be to God it dried up and he moved him to the widow woman. Such a cloud of witness that we have in our life knowing that God's our provider that he can take care of us and watch over us and be and then when he went to the widow woman all she had to do was hold faith into the man of God and what the man of God said and then she was sustained for that time of that drought and what happened and went on church we have I'm telling you such a great cloud of witness Amen. how can we deny what's going on Amen. how can we deny this God that we Amen. live for 
I love you, church, but we got to we got to take and hold of these things that the Bible teaches us. Yes. We do. And this ain't all we got. I hope we got more. Listen, I've got all this. I've got all of them. We got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We got David. What David went through. Yes. Look what he was. He was a shepherd boy out there with some sheep. Just a fella that was out there by himself with the sheep. The Spirit of God came upon him when there's a bear or a lion took one of its mouth. He ripped it by his bare hands into it. And the cloud of witness was that to David to lead David to what? To delivering Israel from the Philistines. That's what that witness was to him to bring him out there. And that's what it does. So these things come in our life to do what? To show us the next thing coming down the road. We're going to be able to handle it. And when David was presented with the flower, the bear and the lion, you know what it done? It built his faith that when he went out there and stood before the giant no matter what he said to him, he said, my God will deliver. You come with the spirit and the sword, I come in the name of the Lord. And he picked up and he done just what he would do. As a shepherd boy, he had his sling and he took and wound it up and he let it go. What did he do? I believe he depended on God for that rock to go to the right place to hit that giant. He, we just got to depend on God if we take and look at this his way. Why? Because he took care of us in our witness. The witness is already there. That God is with us and he's for us. If who could, I'm telling you who can be against us. The Bible says that God is for us. We don't have to worry about these things. Come on, I'm telling you, through famine or anything, we're getting ready to see some stuff in the United States of yes, America. Sir. This yes, cannot sir. keep going on. Right. It cannot last very much longer. It can't. Whatever is going to happen, the persecution is going to happen even more for the church. Why? Because we're standing for what's right. right. Everything that we do now is wrong. Everything that we do now is wrong. You, yes. uh, I don't care... The holier you get, the wronger you are. That's right. It's the truth. If you just if you speak to people truth, you're a liar. That's what they call you. You're a liar. That's the truth. And then they say, My God's not like that. Our God, there's two separate gods. There's a God of this world. That's right. That's, that's what right. the Bible teaches. There's a God of this world. That's right. And that's who people's following. The God of this world. That's who the world's following today. Amen. But the thing up with the church needs to still be the church. No matter what the world is doing. On, we need not to back down. And, and Brother Wayne, I was talking to him today, and he asked me to, to think on gaslighting. And, I, you know, I was, I was thinking on it, and I said, and I don't know what it is. Never did look it up or anything. Well, i got a guy full of useless information that stands on the side of me all the time. And he's, a, he's good. I like it because sometimes it just keeps you busy listening. Yeah. But he's over and he said, I'll tell you what gaslighting is. Because I had Wayne on speakerphone. He said, gaslighting, he said, it's when people tell you stuff and they don't even mean what they're saying. He said, and I guess what he looked it up in, it was it was like a young girl enticing a boy and to doing it. And everything she was saying to him wasn't true. And when it come down to the end of the young boy, he was let down and doing it today. And that's what the, I'm telling you, that's what's happening in the church world today. And that's what is going on. Because when Peter, when it come down to Peter, and he was there, praise be the Lord, and when it come down to the time to follow Jesus, what did he do? He betrayed Jesus. Right. When the cock crowed, what did he do? Right. He knows what happened. He denied yes. Jesus. And he did pray. But all the swelling words that he had at that time towards Jesus, I'll follow you, plumb to death. That's what, that's what Peter would tell Jesus. You're not worshiping my feet. No, sir. But he, then he told him, he said, you won't have no power. Well, wash me all over. I need yeah. to be washed, praise be to God. Yeah. But then he took it out, and all this that we go through, it's happening right now That's right. in the churches. It really is. We need not to gaslight God. We That's really right. don't. That's right. I'm telling you, we need yeah. to take and hold true to the things that we say and do. And you know, we we all slack in some things. That's down praying right before church. And, and I said, Lord, I, I thought about that at public. Yeah. Here at Pharisee, stood up there and said, I'm glad I'm not like other men. I'm glad I give my tithes. I'm glad to do this. And I'm glad I do that. And then here at old public, hmm. old tax collector, yeah. just stood up there and just put his chest and said, I'm a sinner. Yeah. I'm a sinner. And you know what? The Bible says that he went Oh, justified. Yes. Justified. Because he recognized who he was. He recognized the state that he is in. And Jesus said he walked off justified. It's who he was. He walked off that way. Yes. When I was down praying, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. That's right. That brought me out of darkness. And that's how I said, out of darkness into this marvelous life. God, what a witness that we have, church, a cloud of witness. 
that we have. We got some witnesses in the Bible. We got what the Spirit's done for us. But we got to get to a talent. We got need not to be yeah. proud and chest sticking out. Listen, we got some huh. denominational stuff going on. People's right there mean. Yeah, and we need to understand, brother, we are still sinners saved by grace. Right. That's true. People got away from that for a long time. They don't want to call themselves sinners. But you read on in the Bible in the little John, if you say you have no sin, you make God a lie. This flesh is sin. Without Jesus, we are looked upon as sin by God. It's only because of the grace of God that He can even look upon us as anything was that blood shed on Calvary and that we turn when we was baptized in Jesus' name and repented for our sins to cover us from this thing. It's the truth. That's how we accept this blood in our life, this covering in our life is being baptized into the body of Jesus Christ in His name. That's how I understand it. I read it. That's not my interpretation. I can just read it to you, and you should be able to understand that. Right. It's the truth. But we we got we're such a great cloud of witness that we can we should be able to walk through mountains, do things, but understand always. I know this might be a little bit of shotgun, but I'm just preaching my heart. You do it. I, I mean, this, we need to always amen. keep ourselves humble before the mighty right. of God. Because yes. yes. if we don't, we're going to miss out. I don't never want to get in the place of, of hurting somebody or doing anything thinking I'm something. Because right. the Bible oh. told me, he, can't, he reminds me oh. all that you're nothing. If you think you're something, you're nothing. If you think you know anything, you know nothing. It's not, it's not for us to stand up and be proud. This right here should humble a man. Amen. This right here should humble a man. We shouldn't get so high and mighty and, and that we can take and be stiff necked and collared back and, and tight tied and, and think that we are something when we get up here. I'm just merely a man that's trying to make it to heaven and doing the best I can along this way. Yeah, there's some that praise three and four hours. I oblige them. There's some that fast ten days a week. I oblige them. But the thing is, listen today, church. Do the best that you possibly can for God. Be honest with God and God will bring you out of everything. He will. Be honest with God from the heart. That's what I've heard when I get down. We try to pray like everybody. You try to say the big swelling words. You try to say these things. But buddy, when you get done, you got to understand who you are. Right. It's only by Him that we are anything. Yeah, it's only by Him. It's not the clothes I wear. It's not the, it, it ain't how much money I make. It's not by, by the way we do that. It's all by Jesus Christ. Why do I live the way I live? Because of what He done for me. Amen. Amen. Because of what He done for me. I have reverence for my God. I got reverence. I got a fear of my God. Not in a fear of scared, but a fear of reverence. That I reverence my Lord. And I want to do the very best that I can what time I'm here. Do I fail? Amen, I fail. I'll be the first to admit that I fail. But I tell you, I don't stay down. I don't give up. I keep working on it. I keep doing what's supposed to. I'm telling you what's right by the book, by the Word of God. And keep doing the best that I can do. There's been a cloud of witness come on my life that I cannot deny what Colossians and Ephesians says. I can't. There's such a cloud of witness right here, right before me. But I've got even more than that. I got a drug addict sitting back here on the back seat that's been delivered. Come on. I've got drunks in my life that's yes. been delivered. I've yes. got people that's in my life that's been delivered. I got a little boy down in the hospital that's just taken the back that God has took and moved in a room and moved in yes. his body and yes. taken healing him and bringing him up and showing him, seeing him. He's going to respect himself more when he gets out of there. Yes. He's going to love people more when he gets out of there. He's going to think more about life Come when on. he gets out of there. Everything's going to, I'm telling you, everything's going to be different for that young man. Why? Because I believe he's had a time with God that none of us has ever had before. Amen. And he probably needed that in his life Amen. to be where he needed to be with God. I don't know what God's got planned, but that's what's happening. That's you understand? Right. That's what's happening. That's right. I love the Lord. I, I, if there's anything I want for my children, it's to know God more and more. Amen. Amen. I want this witness for him. I want him to understand that it's God bringing him. Samuel right. out there. That's yeah. right. That is God that let me keep my leg. That's right. And let me walk on two legs. That's right. I want to understand that was God. I'm going to give him God all the glory. Yeah, the doctors went to school. They did the stuff that they do. But when it comes down to the end of it, any of them that don't look up and say, Lord, it's up to you now, shame on them. They need to say, Lord, That's it's right. up to you now. That's I need right. the part that you've called me out to do. Yeah. Now it's up to you, Lord. Yeah. And I tell you, that we may have some out there doing it. But all those that ain't, they ought to say shame on themselves. That's right. Because that's all that can happen. Right. Is God take over and finish these things. God it really is. I love the Lord. He's a good God. 
But I've got too much in here. I've got too much going on in my life and around me in people's hearts and in people's lives and watching people change as I pray for them and do the things. And people's got to be miserable. As much prayer goes up for sinners, they've got to be some miserable people out there. I ain't worried about what they look like in front of me. Come on. You know why? Because there's a night coming. That's right. And they're laying there in that bed. And I'm telling you, they're speaking to somebody. I've been there, buddy. Yeah. I've laid and I've tossed and I've turned because somebody was praying for me. Remember that, saints. Somebody was praying for you. Right. Somebody was holding you up. And somebody, and you're that one for them out there that's making their nights restless. That's making things taste bad. That's making these things. Why? Because your prayers is reaching heaven. Amen. I thought today, I said, Lord, somebody's reaching heaven for Samuel. It says somebody is. Yeah. I don't want to claim it all for myself. I don't want to. I want to thank my prayers is reaching God. I really do. But yeah. somebody's reaching heaven for, yeah. for little Samuel. They really are. And I'm so glad for it. I'm so glad if it's just the body as a whole or whatever it may be. Yeah. But somebody's reaching heaven for Samuel. If there's somebody fasting out there extra for Samuel, I thank you. I do. I, I mean, just whatever's going on or for our whole family. The things, because I, I don't even know what half the stuff mommy's mind goes through out there. You know what I mean? I thank God for keeping her, for keeping her. Yeah. Holding her mind. I thank God. I got too much. I'm telling you. See, God do too much to say that He ain't real. Come to on. say that He's not in me. Come on. There's been too much. The day He filled me with the Holy Ghost, that I don't know. Dementia couldn't even take it from you. <laughs> That's because there's nothing like it. There's nothing like no that you sealed. You hear me? Amen. That you sealed. Amen. And that you got. You got a man walking in you that keeps you from wrong. Amen. That when you do wrong, he corrects you. You got a heavenly Father that's inside of you, that's a holding you and keeping you. My God, there's nothing like it. Knowing that by the scriptures, knowing that by the scriptures, yes. it's good to find yourself in the Word of God. Amen. That's where I want to find myself yes. in the Word of God. Yes. I do. I found the Word of God to be baptized in Jesus' name. I had to do it. I did. I, I just, I know that after, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, found all that in there about the tongues and the different types of tongues, interpretation of tongues and all these things. And I know it just ain't a language, but I know it's a fulfillment of God. I know it's, it's a gift. I do know that. And I know there's a teaching in there. Praise be to God that it's the fulfillment of God. That when God filled a person, they spoke in tongues. It's what the Bible teaches us. Right. It's the truth. There's too much of a cloud of witness for it. And then they, they, they try to tell you that it's just Israel only. No, sir. He went to the Gentile. Peter preached to the Gentile. They was filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus. And they spoke in tongues. They baptized in Jesus' name. Was commanded to. That's right. There's a witness. That's right. A cloud of witness. And I've been, I've been so overwhelmed with the cloud of witness that I can't deny Christ. Amen. I can't deny this way. Amen. And every atheist out there is going to see this man. Yes. You understand? Every eye will see him. Everyone. I watched uh, every knee will bow. Samuel there in a certain part he had a at them uh, we call them spasms. And I watched him bow up. Couldn't do nothing about it. I mean he was his mouth was wide open and he was just drawing. And I thought to myself one day Every knee's going to bow. Yeah. He's, a, he's in control of the muscles. Yeah. Amen. They're going to buckle yeah. to the ground. Whether they want to or not. Their knees is going to pound that dirt wherever they're at. Yeah. And that tongue is going to speak and that mouth is going to move. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to confess in their heart that he is king of kings and lord of lords. That's right. They are, Sister Donna. And they're going to do that before they're casting into that lake. Before they're, I'm telling you, before the wrath of God comes upon, they'll do that. They really will. They, they, they won't be able to help it. They won't be able to fight it. Why? Because it's going to be God doing it. It's going to be God doing it. Why? Because He knows what His Son did. He knows the life that He gave. He knows what happened and the opportunity that each and every one of us had. Why are they going to be crying from the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the face of the one that's sitting on the throne? Because of this opportunity tonight. Because they can come to the one and only Jesus Christ. They give them life and give it to them more abundant. That the gospel's been preached and they've heard it and they've denied it. They've denied it and they're going to cry out one day for the rocks and the mountains to hide them from him. Could you imagine not knowing him and him come? My God. Could you imagine... They say Jerusalem's going crazy over a man over right now, or Israel. 
a man going through and they're calling him the second the, the Messiah right now. Many will come in my name. The man's got glasses. The man, they're going crazy over him. Crazy multitudes following this man. Following this man. It's coming to pass, church. It's coming to pass. I mean, lots of these things, there's people claim to be, I guess, him in America and this and that, but this is over his, this is his people over here. These things that's written in this book right here and the things that's coming, these things that's happening over there. It really is today. We're, we're his bride today. We really are. But they're coming in his name, claiming to be him, and claiming all these things. I mean multitudes of people wanting to do what this man's doing, hearing this man out for what he's saying, and doing what he's telling them to do. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy what's going on in this world right now. It really is. And you wouldn't think... They've already rejected the Messiah. They rejected him. That's right. They're going to call him Lord of Lords and King of Kings one day. Yeah. They are. They're going to look up and they're going to say, here is our Messiah. This is the one that came. This is the one that we rejected. And I believe Isaiah, I believe they can quote it over there. Mm -hmm. I believe their high priests and all of them over right now can quote Isaiah. All the way through. Probably backwards. And then here they're going to see this man. And I believe Isaiah is going to flow through their heart. The book of Isaiah. Yeah. That's the Jesus book of the Old Testament. And they're going to be able to. They're going to be, I'm telling you, their eyes are going to be open one day to see who he is. But I'm glad my eyes is open now, ain't you? I'm glad I've already bowed. I'm glad I've already said, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's that simple, yes, Lord. And do what he helps to do. He's not a, He's not a, a taskmaster over top of us beating us no. to do anything. No. We better love him and do these things freely with a free will that he give us. Amen. We better. He won't overcome our free will. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart that Jesus will not overcome our free will. That's right. That he will take it. That he'll, he'll allow us to make these decisions if we want to serve him or not. Yeah. If we want to wake up today and say, today for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We do. But he, he wants to be first when we confess him. Amen. You know, he's a jealous God still yet. I still believe he's a jealous God. That's I still right. believe it. And I believe there's a wrath coming upon this earth that people don't It says for the children of disobedience, don't it? That's right. You cannot get people to understand that this is the obedience of the word. That we need to be obedient to this word. Amen. You know, you can just believe, you can just whatever, but if you're, he said, we're here and not a doer. No, huh? we're not doing it. Right. We got to can't just be a hero. We got to do it. We, do we really it. do. I love the Lord to see you in church. Amen. We got a hope. We got such a great cloud of witness. That's Amen. what He spoke to my heart. Was a cloud of witness. What a witness we have right here in this book. That's right. Everything that's happened in our life, the testimonies that we've heard, the saints that we've heard, the messages that's been preached, Amen. the way people walk and what they're doing today in the Lord. It is. Just keep our minds sharp upon God. Keep our spirit keen to what he wants us to do and, and keep it to work. This discerning of spirits, pray for that. Pray for it stronger. Pray for it that we can feel people, that we know people before they get to us. That's right. Really, it's the truth. We've got, got lots of good old boys out there. Good old boys, but it ain't good old, it ain't good old boys that makes it in. It's those that's born again. It is. That's been said for years by many, many preachers. That the good old boys ain't the ones going to make it. It's going to be the born again. We got to go by the word. We got to go the word way. You know, people say, "Well, it just ain't fair." And, and buddy, I tell you what, it, to me, it's just as fair as you can get. You know why? Because it's an opportunity. Because we're listening. Every child in here and us, we was born in the sin. That's right. And this is our opportunity to come out of sin. And to be saved, to be born again, to go to that beautiful place one day. It really is. And to live a good, holy life down here. We need to keep separating ourselves from the world. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus already justified us. Yes. He said, give your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said, sacrifice yourself. And give it unto God. This body's God. The Bible even tells us we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's where he dwells is in here. Why would we want to do something to the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. 
Ain't a one of us would smoke in here. Ain't a one. I don't even want to drink pop in here. Amen. I don't. I don't. I don't feel comfortable. I don't want my kids doing it. I, I don't want to come in here for a cup of coffee and get comfortable in the mornings at Sunday school. And I, I just don't want to do that. I really don't. I reference this place because it's, it's, it's God's. It really is. But we, it's right here. It's the true house of God. Amen. It really is. And everything that, everything that we want to, we'll do to it. Really, we are not referencing that he's in there. He's right. in there. Right. We represent it wrong. Represent it wrong. It's the truth. I love him. He's a good guy. We'll, we'll make his body go through things that he shouldn't even have to. Amen. Heart rates go up, shouldn't even have to. Yeah. Adding things to it. Why? Because our life is so rushing. I just naturally get tired now. Since I, can't, I ain't got no caffeine, I just get tired. If you yeah. see me yawn, it's an honest yawn. Amen. It ain't because you're testifying too long. This time, just yawning. I'm tired. Okay, I, ain't, I didn't drink a five-hour power drink before I come to preach to jump me around the house. Amen. 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 If I stand in one place and I'm tired, and that's what the Lord, that's what happened, the Lord don't move, I ain't going to move. Amen. Because the Spirit will move you. I know He will. I went to church the dog tower before and run the whole house down because the Spirit of the Lord. It'll quench this mortal body. Amen. He'll let us know on it. Yes, will. I love the Lord. He's a good God. Thank I praise you. Him this evening. But we got such a great cloud of witness. Yes, we do. You get that. Just think about things that's happened in your life yes. down through. How you've come from where you was to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Just think about the witness. The witness. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. Just that witness. And I, I keep thinking about them doctors so amazed that we didn't have smoke in our lungs. That there wasn't nothing burning in our lungs, in our mouth, or throat, Amen. and things like that happened. I guess usually that happens to people. Mm -hmm. Usually it does, but mm -hmm. it didn't does. My God wants to use our voice. Right. He wants to use us. And, and Samuel's voice is coming back stronger, stronger, and stronger. And I believe it's going to be normal. Praise the Lord. I believe that with all my heart it's going to be normal. Yes, I believe it's going to be restored. I'm telling you. Yes. To do what what he what he needs to do, yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. I believe it is. I believe he's going to be a good God. Yes. Because the, the Lord's the, the Lord is just amazing in, in how He's healing and doing things, and watching Him do things in other people's life. How he's doing things. Amen. We we still got a ways to go. We need prayer, Amen. Amen. We need prayer. It's, but I know God's God. I really do. I know God's God. You know, as you go down through you. You get you get a little bit anxious, I guess, and, you know. And one thing stops, and then it may come back for a little bit. And you're like, "Oh man, oh man!" But you just gotta say, "Lord, you got this. Amen. Lord, you got this." That's and, right. you know, and I, I'd look at Samuel many nights and say, "Bubba, I know you're puking again. It ain't bothering me." I said, "It's gonna stop." It's gonna stop. I, mean, I, I would. I'd just look at him, and talk to him before I'd leave his room at night, and I'd say, "Son, I know you're not feeling you pooping yet, but you're going to." Yeah. And I'd pray over him and go on, you know, just and go and go sleep good. That's why we got faith in God. I mean, yeah. Peter slept good in prison. Mm -hmm. Why can't we sleep good knowing the Holy Ghost was in us and everything and God's in control of everything? Right. We ought to be able to sleep. We ought to be the best sleeping people. Yeah. On faith, I mean, on earth as Christians, Amen. ought to be the best sleeping people they are. Yeah. But we got worry wars. Peaceful in the arms of the Lord. We got worry wars trying to add a cubit at a time. They can't even do that. Amen. 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 You got You can't do it. It's got. It ain't gonna happen. You can worry all you want to, but it don't change a thing. That's right. It really don't. And I believe there's a peace somewhere with that. Right. I believe they are. There's a peace that people can get that they won't worry. I believe. If not, the word wouldn't say nothing about it. Right. It would be in our worry, my children. Worry, <laughs> because I can't do nothing. But he don't say that. No, he don't. Okay? He, it turns into sin. It's what worrying does. Amen. It turns into sin. So he's wanting us to come out of that. Yep. Come out of it. Trust me. Cast your Trust care. me. Yeah, cast your, cast your cares upon me. I care for that boy, so I give him to Jesus. I care for that girl, so I give him to Jesus. That's right. I love him. I got another one out there running around. He's going to come to church. Amen. I believe it. I believe he's going to come to church. There's conviction power. Yeah. That uh, There's conviction power. Yes. I know they are. They really are. I know, he's, I know he's thinking about it. And I believe the Lord can bring them in. You know, he's, it's all kinds of things that you think about. And what a witness God's given us in our life to keep us going. Mm -hmm. It really has. It does. And, you know, and I do believe some people get 
great callings in their life because that'll keep them. Really will. There's, there's, there's a lot of people who need great responsibility just to keep them. Yeah. It really is. They need that in their life to keep them. And, uh, and I believe God will do that for people. He really will. And, uh, but I, I thank the Lord for all he's done. I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. Glad to be able to deliver what the Lord let me deliver. And I just saved. I'm saved. Amen. By his grace. He's merciful. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm glad to be his this evening. Amen. Really is. Believe I'm gonna go to heaven one day. Amen. Most I want to see Jesus. Yeah. You believe in Him for so long, and you trust in Him, and you start. There's a yearn inside of you. Yes. You wants to see Him. Yeah. You know. Yes. You want to see him, the one that <laughs> made it possible. Took him fishing that bread. Thank you, Jesus. Think about that witness. He took him fishing that bread. He started, he said grace over, and he started breaking that and feeding multitudes and multitudes of people. I want to see your hands that broke that bread. Yeah. I want to see them hands that tore that fish. Yeah. And he said, give it to them, feed them. And they was filled in 12 baskets. Yeah. Look what a witness. Amen. Look what a witness. Amen. Yeah. But what people, I know Jesus had multitudes following him. Jesus was famous. He had multitudes following him. And they want to say that when they when they preach and when they do it. You know, it's, it's good to have multitudes for But let me tell you something. You know what happened to Jesus? When he got down to telling life and started telling about the way to live and that, you know what happened? Twelve was with him. That's right. Yeah. They departed. They forsook him. Yes. When it come down to the nitty gritty, yes. where the rubber meets the road, they forsook him. Yeah, was and it's getting the same way today. When the preachers start preaching how to live, they forsake him. Yeah. They forsake Christ. Not the preacher. You can't for, you you're forsaking Christ. I don't take it to an offense when somebody gets mad because I preach that you should dress a certain way or that you should live a certain way that's pleasing unto this word right here. That's right. Yeah. I don't take that to an offense, but you've just left God. You right. just despised God. You just said no to God. Is what you've it. done. People stop believing in their men of God. They stop believing in them, that they can that they need a good, clean, holy life to live by and dress right and live right and be who they need to be for God. They got grace. Oh, they just got grace. Yeah. Just grace, grace, grace. They're covered by grace. Drunk and and grace. it's done. And God called us. He said, Give your body a living sacrifice. That's this body. I can't right. find it and study it any other way right. besides this body. This body. Giving it a living sacrifice, holy, that's separate, that's set apart, that's for God's use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy and acceptable. And that's your reasonable service. I can't get it any other way. And you have simple reading right there. Simple. That's it. That's the stuff that you, you can't, that a wayfaring fool can even understand that stuff. That's right. Really can't. I love the Lord. He's a good God. I'm going to give him a hand clap. Thank you, Jesus.